Magandang umaga mga kaheneral. Ating tungayan ang isang halimbawa ng ODL class o Online Distance Learning kasama ang Grade 8 Pasture na pinangunahan ng kanilang guro sa English, si Ginang Maria Ada Santos. Okay, good morning everybody. Good morning, Pasture. Good morning to all the teachers, our guests for today, and of course to our principal, Ma'am Malika Balang. Good morning, Ma'am. So let us start. As always, let us start the day right with a short prayer. I think Marlene Cayetano is going to lead the prayer for today. So let's have Marlene. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and faithfulness. Thank you for the opportunity to learn as an open mind to grasp the things that we are about to learn. We are teacher to deliver your lesson for us. We ask for your divine presence to be in our midst. We give you back the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So let us do the checking of attendance. Let us have the leader for each group. Let us begin with group number one. So who is the leader of group number one? Okay, Rexy. Go ahead, Rexy. We are group one. We are group one. We are one. We are one. Mobalo. Galay. Tuble. Cayetano. De la Vesta, Cruz, Calu, Hadad, Group 1. Okay, very good. How about Group number 2? Leader of Group number 2. Ma'am, good morning po. Good morning. This is uh, our group Pierre. Josh. Go ahead. Yes, si Josh po yung kakanta mo. Leader is Algen, members are Gian, Lorin, Joshua, others are Chelsea, Eric, Elisha, Jai, Rachel. We are the group. We are the group two. 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 Okay, so we have our singing duo ha, in group number two. Let us have group number three. Leader of group number three. Where is the leader of group number three? Okay, Gabriel. Okay, let's have group number three. Ready? Where's three? Wow, very good. So with the accompaniment of a guitar. So let us have group number four. Francesca. Fall of group four doesn't even rhyme. Rise of group four sounds better. Yeah, we are ready for the dry run. Our attendance matters. Okay, very good. And last, but definitely not the least, let us have group number five. Okay, Kyle. Group five is the best. We are always the 
So that was the checking of attendance. So obviously, as you can see in our PowerPoint in, our, in the slides, this subject is English E, and I am going to be your teacher. My name is Mrs. Maria Ada San Pascual Santos. And let us begin. Are you ready? Thumbs up if you're ready. Look around you. Do you see your parents around you? Look to your right. To your left, behind you. I can see your mom behind you, Kyle. Okay, they are not around. Okay, so let us begin. Are you ready with your drill boards and notebooks? Marker? Okay, ready? Okay, so let us begin with learning task number one. The directions. I want you to examine the jumbled letters and identify the words referred to using the given meaning. And then I want you to write your answers in your notebook or you may use your drill board. Ready? Okay, let's begin. Okay, the first word means complete disorder and confusion. You may write your answer. Do not show your answers yet, Francesca, later. Okay, ready for number two? Okay, number two means a painful or apprehensive uneasiness of mind. What is that word? Okay, third. The third word means to decorate a dish or a food. Okay, fourth, this word means a person you are playing or fighting against in a game or in a competition. And the last word, this word means easily broken or damaged. Okay, ready? Pens down, show us your answers. As you can see in every room in General Liserio, we believe that honesty is the best policy. So I want you to check your own work. Ready? Okay, so these are the answers. Okay, number one, we have chaos. Okay, I can see the reaction of Gabriel. Number two, it is anxiety. Three is garnish. Number four, opponent. And last, it is fragile. Okay, we'll get five. Raise your hands if you get five. Four. Okay, three, two, one. But do not worry, this is that was only a pre-task. But the questions are, what made you guess the correct word in each item? And did you find it easy to guess the correct words? Why? Anybody? Since my grid view is not working, I'll be calling you randomly. But if you want to volunteer, you may do so. So what made you guess the correct word in each item? Did you find it easy to guess the correct words and why? So I think let's have Irish Anne. Is Irish around? You may unmute your mic. Where is Irish? My 
ma'am? Uh, yes, Irish. What made you guess the correct word in each item? And did you find it easy to guess the correct words and why? I found the I found the questions easy because of the meaning. Okay. Who else? Okay. Thank you. How about you, Gabriel? Did you find it easy to guess the correct words? And why? Louder, Gabriel. Come again. It was easy for me to identify the words. Okay. So, meaning to say, it was a lot easier for you to identify the words simply because the definition or, or the meaning of each word was already given, right? Right? Thumbs up? Okay. So, according here, understanding a sentence or text is, is essential to have the full grasp. So, for you to be able to understand a sentence or a text, it is very important for you to be able to get the meaning of the text that you are reading. Though, the usual thing that you do every time that you encounter a new word that is not familiar to you, what do you usually do? You look for a dictionary, right? You open a dictionary, you look for a thesaurus, or sometimes you look for Mr. Google. Search, search, and search. Although the dictionaries and other online resources are helpful, yes, they are very helpful, but you have to consider and you have to remember that they are not always available. Sometimes uh, dictionaries are not available. Sometimes you, ha you don't have internet to search using the Google app. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do if dictionaries are not available? What if thesaurus is not around to help you? Or even your best friend, Mr. Google, is too busy to even notice you. What are you going to do? Are you just going to sit in one corner and feel sad about yourself because you are not able to unlock difficult terms? So that will be our topic for today. Did you know that even without the use of a dictionary, you can actually get the meaning of words? And that is by using context clues. So what is your idea when we say context clues? Anybody? Yes, Marlene. Any idea? The first word that comes to your mind when you hear the word Context clues. Um, a book. Come again, Marlene. Um, a book. Okay. What else? Yes, Francesca. Hint. Okay, hint. Very good. What else? Any other answer? How about you, Algen? What comes to your mind when you hear the words context clues? Words that help us to understand the sentence. Okay, very good. Words or phrases that may help us understand a sentence or a statement. So here is our definition. So according here, context clues are important words or phrases in a sentence that may help in identifying the meaning of difficult word or items. They provide further information about a word or phrases. So just like what Aljan said, uh, Marlene and also Francesca a while ago, these are hints or clues that may help us in understanding the sentences or the statements. Through context clues, words are associated, meaning to say somehow they are connected with one another to get the meaning of unfamiliar text or the whole statement. Context refers to the parts of a piece of writing that precede or follow a word and contributes to its whole meaning. So the best thing that you can do to actually understand context clues is to look for the words that come before and after the unfamiliar word. 
that is the best thing that you can do, okay? Look for the words that precede or follow the unfamiliar words because somehow these groups of words will give us a hint or a clue on the definition of the unfamiliar word. Do you understand? Do you follow? Okay. There are actually different types of context clues. So for today, we are going to discuss the first four types. So the first one, the first type is known as synonym or restatement clue. So according here, synonym is a type of context clue that provides the synonyms of words to provide the meaning of an unfamiliar word or words. From the word itself, synonym. So basically, you will be able to find the context clue by looking for the synonymous term to the unfamiliar word. A word that somehow gives you the meaning or the closest meaning to the unfamiliar word. For examples, number one, some shouts continuously or all the time, and it makes me uncomfortable. Here, the unfamiliar word is continuously, and you will notice that the underlined words all the time is the context clue of continuously. You will also notice here that we have Okay, we have the comma and also the conjunction or because somehow they will help us also in identifying the clues. In the second sentence, the director felt remorse or shame for hiring some incompetent employees. Here, the unfamiliar word is remorse and the context clue is shame. Okay, next. The second type of context clue is antonym or contrast clue. So this is exactly the opposite of the synonyms. Antonym or contrast clue is a type of context clue that tells the opposite meaning of the difficult word and basically it shows contrast. If we will go back to synonyms, so according here, you will notice in the examples that continuously also means all the time. Remorse also means shame, but in the antonyms, the context clue will give you the exact opposite of the unfamiliar word. Do you follow? Okay, examples. Number one, Ken is Gregorius unlike his shy brother. So the underlined word is shy, that is our context clue, and that is the opposite term or the opposite meaning of the unfamiliar word, which is Gregorius. So you will notice the difference between the two. In number two, the feral cat would scratch the wall unlike the friendly cat. Here, the unfamiliar word is feral and the context clue we use is friendly. So you will notice that the underlined words somehow are opposite, right? Shy, friendly. So that is how you use an antonym or contrast clue. Okay, the third type is definition or statement clue. This is actually one of the easiest types of context clues that you can actually use. Why? Because it is the type of context clue that provides direct statement. You will be able to understand the word simply because the meaning is directly given to you. The meaning of the unfamiliar word or words. Example. Okay, look at the examples here. Look at the letters, uh, the words rather in bold letters. If you are not into science, you will not be familiar with ossicles, right? But since the direct meaning of ossicles are given, you will be able to identify the definition or the word itself. Ossicles are the three small bones in the middle ear. Did you know that? So the three small bones in the middle of our ears is actually called ossicles. Second, her voice is inaudible. Okay, our unfamiliar word is inaudible and it means no one could hear it. Her voice is inaudible, no one could hear it. So the meaning is no one could hear it. Going back, 
Okay, going back to synonyms, another clue, you will notice the use of comma and also the use of or to signify synonyms. Next, in antonym, you may also notice the use of the word unlike. That is to introduce the opposite meaning or the contrast. In definition, you can also use the semicolon that will give you or that will provide the definition of the unfamiliar word. Did you get it? Do you follow? Or are we fast? Okay. Next, the last one is explanation or example clue. It is a type of context clue that provides readers with varying examples to allow them to fully examine the unfamiliar words. This time, words like including, such as, and for example, point out example clues. So your keywords here, the introductory words are including, such as, for example, they are going to point you to the example clues, okay? Examples. Mammals, including elephants, horses, and carabaos, are helpful animals. The unfamiliar word here is mammals. And the examples that we use are elephants, horses, and carabaos. So how are you going to define mammals? based from the examples given. Yes, Matt. So how are we going to define the word mammals based on the examples given? The examples of mammals are elephants, horses, and carabaos. So how are you going to define mammals? Yes, Matt. Matt Cruz. So what do you think is the definition of mammals based on the given examples? Matt, are you around? Matt? Can't you hear me, Matt? Yes, who else? Elisha, Nicole. How about you, Nicole? What do you think is the definition of mammals based on the given examples? Elephants, horses, and carabaos. How are you going to define mammals? Mammals are the helpful animals that help people work. Okay, they are considered to be helpful animals. They help us in working. Okay, what else? Other definition? Yes, Gabriel. Mammals are animals that produce waste for their young. Okay, so mammals can be considered animals that can actually bear their young ones and they can actually feed them with milk using the mammary glands. Am I correct with that? Okay. And the second example here, as a country in the Pacific Ring of Fire, the Philippines always experiences different natural calamities. So these natural calamities such as typhoons, earthquakes, and tsunamis. In other countries, they pronounce it as Tsuna uh, tsunamis with a silent T. But in our country, we usually pronounce it as tsunamis. Okay. So such as typhoons, earthquakes, and tsunamis. So how are you going to define natural calamities? So what do you think is the definition of natural calamities with the given examples here? Anybody? Yes, Ira? Ira Noreen? So what do you think is the definition of natural calamities using the given examples? Yes, Ira. Can you hear me, Ira Noreen Estanislao? Ira? You can. Okay, how about Joshua Jail? Is Joshua around? Where is Joshua? Yes, ma'am. 
Yes, Joshua, how about you? How are you going to define natural calamities with the given examples as used in the system? Can I see your face, Joshua? Okay, Mr. Pogi. Yes, Joshua, we want to see your face. So how are you going to define natural calamities? Idea. What happened, Joshua? Who else? Okay, let's have Eugene. Hello, ma'am. Yes, Eugene, how about you? How are you going to define natural calamities with the given examples? According to the sentence, natural calamities are natural occurrence. Okay, natural occurrences. So we, when we say natural, this is something that is inevitable, right? Meaning unavoidable. You cannot avoid it. That's why it doesn't have to be natural. Okay, very good. So those are the four con types of context clues. Let us go back. So again, we have the synonym or the restatement clue. And then we have the antonym or the contrast clue. The third one is the definition or statement clue. And the last one we have here, explanation or example clue. Now, it is your turn to give me examples of sentences with context clues from any of the given types of context clues. So I will be giving you a minute to think of your examples. You may write your examples in, the, in your drill board or in your notebooks. You may use any of the given types of context clues. Ready? Okay, so let us try. Paul Jigger, Mr. President, would you like to give one example of any type of context clue? So where is Mr. President? Paul? Where did Paul go? Where is he? How about Eliza? Eliza Mabalot. Eliza, can you hear me? Oh, yes, Marlene. My can you speak louder, Marlene? My okay, come on. Is unlikely a boy. Okay, what is your unfamiliar word? Sister. And, and the, the meaning using context clue? Um, antonym. What is the meaning of the unfamiliar word in your statement? Sister and boy. Okay, who else? Very good. Anybody else? Ah, Paul. Paul cannot access his mic. Okay, how about you, June Rex? Can when you give us an example? June Rex, we want to see your face. Kindly open your camera. Okay, so your example is what type of context clue? You're going to statement use statement definition. Okay, statement definition. Okay, go ahead. Felis catus is the scientific name of cat. What is your unfamiliar word? Felis catus. And your clue? The it's the scientific name of cat. Okay, very good. Who else? 
Okay, Francesca. Haberdashery, which is a store that sells men's clothing, is becoming more common today. What is the type of context clue that you use? Definition. Okay, definition. The unfamiliar word is? Haberdashery. And it means? Store that sells men's clothing. Okay, very good. Another one, I can see Elisha, Nicole. She was raising her hand a while ago. Yes, Nicole, go ahead. The house is ominous and dark. It is okay. filled with spiders. In what the, is the context clue? The context clue is the dark. And the, con and the word is ominous. Ominous means dark. What is the type of context clue that you use in your statement? Is dark. it synonym, antonym? It's what did you use? Synonym. Okay, you use synonyms or the for the type of context clue, right? Okay, so very good. No more? Okay, did you understand our topic? Thumbs up? Okay, so let us proceed with learning task number two. Ready? Ready? Okay, for learning task number two, I want you to read the sentences carefully and identify the meaning of the highlighted words without the use of any dictionary. I can see some of the faces here. The grid view is not working, but I know that you are all honest without the use of any dictionary. Write the letter of the correct meaning in each item. Ready? Ready. Gabriel, nervous? Okay, ready. Okay, so I will give you, I think two minutes will be enough for this task. I am really sorry with the birds. I know that you can hear the chirping of our love birds. We have less than 30 and we have three dogs. So I am really sorry. Kindly bear with me. Okay, next one. Are you done with numbers one and two? Okay, next one. Okay, finish. Let me go back to the first part so that you can review your answers before we check. Okay, done. Done. Okay, review the second part. Done. Are you all done? Okay, exchange notebooks.
Okay, joke. <laughs> you can ask your parents to check your answers. Okay, once again, I want you to check your own answers. I trust you. Okay, ready for the answers? Okay, the first number, uh, let us go back first with the statements. Okay. According to number one, the government has implemented quarantine measures to limit activities outside their homes. The choices are A, events, B, policies, letter C, sizes. Measure means sizes. Okay, the answer is letter. Show me your answers. Okay, it's very small. Okay, the answer is letter B, policies. Correct. Number two. In response to the growing concerns in the increasing COVID-19 cases in Calabarzon, the local governments remind their citizens to strictly follow all applicable health protocols, including wearing masks, physical distancing, and disinfection to minimize threats on the spread of coronavirus. The choices given, benefits A, letter B, practices, and letter C, reminders. Show me your answers. Show them to the camera. What should be the answer? Okay, protocols means reminders. Letter C. Next. I can see Francesca. She's very happy. Okay, the third one. The government has provided social amelioration grants to deserving Filipinos to help them get through this pandemic. The unfamiliar word is amelioration. Okay? The choices are letter A, financial, letter B, improvement, letter C, system. So what is the answer? So I think most of you will answer financial aid. Okay. Next. But the answer for that is letter B. Amelioration stands for improvement. When we say amelioration, it doesn't only refer to fin financial aid. Okay. Next, going back to number four. Filipinos prove the resilience. We are considered to be resilient people. Every day as they recover, as we recover quickly from difficulties brought by COVID-19. The word here is resilience. Okay, resilience means A, toughness, B, unity, letter C, weakness. Okay, the answer is letter A, that is toughness. When we say resilient, it talks about strength. Okay, so once again, recall the answers are B, C, letter B, and letter A. Okay. Be honest, we got zero. I doubt it. One. That's okay, Gabriel. Two. Okay, three. And four. We got the perfect score. Okay, very good. Now, this time... Let us be interactive. Okay. I sent the link to our group chat. You can check our GC. I already sent the link to our GC. But if you want, you can use the QR code below, as you can see. How do you use that? Share it. Open your share it. And then look for scan. It will go directly to our link. Ready? So I will give you five minutes to understand and to answer this interactive activity. Okay, ready? Okay, start.
For those who are watching, you can also try this. Scan the QR code or go directly to the link. This is fun. Okay, this should be the part that you are answering right now. And the good thing about this interactive activity, right after you answer below the activity, you will be able to find out if your answers are all correct. And then if they are not, always remember, try and try until we succeed. Okay, two minutes. Mami, hindi po, ano, hindi po buo yung nakikita po namin sa cellphone. Have you tried the link, Kyle? There, the, li the link is given in the chat box. Mami, hindi po kompleto yung sentence. Ah, probably you are using cell phones, right? Okay. Uh, that's the problem. You will not be able to see the entire sentences or the entire text. Anyway, for as long as you can see the given unfamiliar words, just like what we mentioned a while ago, you can look for context clues. And that will be okay. Okay? That's the problem with interactive. How about the others? about the others? Gian, is it okay? Okay.
Okay, ready? Okay, ready. So let us try to answer. Okay, Gian, what is your answer in the first word? Bufant. Huge, vast, odd, strange. How about in the given choices? Fluffy or plain? What is your answer? Okay, try. We have to be interactive sometimes because you are enrolled to online distance learning. Okay, you will notice here that for instance, I will answer, huh? for instance, even if my answers will be wrong, I just want to show you. Okay, okay, try. Oh, let's say floppy. Okay, the next word, tatty, or oh, let's say shabby. And then theoretical, uh, let's say difficult, and then polarization, mm, opposition, and devolved, or oh, let's say upgraded. You will notice that at the end of the activity, it says here, try again. It means that I failed. And that's okay. That's the good thing about interactive because you can try and try until you get the final answer. And that is not actually cheating because you are trying to find ways on how you are going to unlock difficult words. But did you find it fun? Was that okay? Okay. Who had... Out of five, who got... Five. You will notice if it is green, it means it's correct. We got five. How about four? Three. Oh, Gabriel, three. Rexy, two. Okay, Joshua, one. Okay, no one got one and I cannot see everybody here. Okay, but we can always try. This is a good example. The Texas Getaway, get, Gateway rather, is a good example for interactive activities. But do not worry because, okay, wait, ah. Okay, here, because you are going to encounter and you are going to use the same words but this time you will be the ones to give the definition of those words using the different context clues that we discussed earlier today am i clear this is going to be your asynchronous task meaning to say you can do this at home sort of assignment so for your asynchronous task you're going to define the following words that you encountered a while ago in your turn interactive activity by using the different types of context clues and use them in your own sentences. Did you get it? Did you understand the directions? Okay. If you notice, let us go back to the words. The first, I want you to write your answers in your notebook. Number one is bufan. You're going to use synonym. Number two is study. You're going to use antonym. Number three is devolved. And you're going to use definition. Hi there, Ma'am Leia. Number four is theoretical. And you're going to use explanation. And the last word, you will go back to synonym. And the word is polarization. Okay, questions? Do you have any questions? Raise your hand. Mr. President, our moderator for today. Is there any question in the chat box? None? Okay. So every day, as we go on, we will have our reflections. But this is going to be in written form. You are actually going to write your reflection in your journal. But for today, for today, I want to hear your reflections orally. So let us try to answer the following reflections. Don't worry. We are done. We are almost there.
So the first one, my journey through this lesson enabled me to learn what blank. It made me realize that and I therefore commit to. So I think we can have three representatives from Pasture to give me the reflections for today. Let us begin with, uh, let's say, Kyrie. Kyrie will answer the first part. So Kyrie, how's your journey for today's lesson? My yes, journey Kyrie. through my journey through this lesson enabled me to learn how important context clues are and it will help it will help me know the meaning of the words even without using dictionary thesaurus and google okay very good well said how about the second part it made me realize that let's have carl um, it made me realize that if even we don't have enough dictionary to source and also Mr. Google, we can look for the synonyms or antonyms to answer the direct explanation of the word that it's difficult to know. Okay, very good. And the last one, we will do the commitment. So let us have Francesca. You therefore commit. Where is Francesca? Nicole, eh? where is Francesca? Ma'am, naglaloko daw po yung wifi nila. Ah, okay. So, you can do it, Raydon. Okay. So, what will be your commitment? I therefore commit to use context clue when the Soros dictionary or the girl is not around me. Okay, very good. So let's do the for our representatives, Kyrie, Carl, and Radon. Okay, that's it. Congratulations, Pasture. Job well done. And do not forget to subscribe. A joke. There's no subscription here. Okay, I'll see you again next time. Congratulations and God bless us.